Oh, you know, man. Sometimes we get to the shop and there's a sweet sports car laid out for us to work on. Other times we get to the shop and there's a truck with over 316,000 miles on it. Oh, and a dead battery. This thing's got a lot of road miles. It's running out of steam. But our job today is to put the steam back in this machine. So stick around. All right, with 316,000 miles on this truck. It's unreal. It's time for us to put a little bit of sweat equity into this thing <laughs> and make it run another, you know, 100, 200,000. So. Yeah, so we just fixed our battery problem, dropped a brand new AC Delco battery in there. And remember back in the day, I know you guys are guilty of it, I'm guilty of it. We used to just walk to the shelf, find the one with the most cold cranking amps, we'll take that one. Yeah. Well, now it's about reserve capacity as well as cold cranking amps. So it's not a one size fits all. My mama would smack me in the back of the head if I did that today, man. Yeah. So make sure with AC Delco, they have more SKUs, more OE original batteries that fit your reserve capacity and your cold cranking amps. So it's gonna make it last a lot longer. So it's a good value. You. Now, we've got a couple of issues with this truck other than just the battery. We've had in the past anyway, this owner's had to replace the radiator twice and the heater core. Hmm. Now that's, you know, it's got a lot of miles on it, but that's just not quite right. You shouldn't have to do that. Oh. So we're going to check the cooling system over really well and see if there's something driving that accelerated corrosion. So the first thing we're going to do Oops. is check for voltage in our cooling. Did you say voltage in the cooling? Yeah. So if I Drop one lead in the coolant, okay. one lead on the battery, just see if there's a circuit going on. The coolant is actually generating almost a quarter, quarter volt. Whew. Now, that might not sound like much, but that volt constantly driving is gonna accelerate the corrosion and wear these components out prematurely. Yeah, man, and you think about it, if you just had a gallon jug of coolant, dropped it in there, it wouldn't show anything. So we have an actual live battery sitting right here and to similar metals. Yeah, because you've got an iron block and it's corroding and you've got aluminum components, you've got two metals in there. That's essentially what's going on in a battery is it's creating voltage and again, corroding things out. So let me show you a little experiment over here oh, to give yeah. you a little better idea of what's happening inside there. All right, we know we have enough iron and aluminum deposits in there to create a small voltage, but we're also increasing the conductivity of the fluid. So, quick little science experiment. I've got a nine volt battery here. I've got a little 12 volt tester, but it's enough to light the bulb. Now, you know, I've got conductivity through the wire. Well, if I drop it in pure water, so one end of the lead is in pure water, this is distilled, and the other lead here, I can't really pass a current through that water. It just doesn't have the free electrons. But if I take some of the coolant out of the system where I've got some of those metallic elements in there, right, I can dimly light that bulb. So I've increased the conductivity of that fluid over the distilled water. Now here's one thing where a lot of people kind of mess up. They think, oh, I got 50-50, so they put the coolant in, I'm gonna run some tap water. Well, here's some tap water. Tap water has minerals and you know, calcium in it, and, and it's got, you know, things like chlorine, and that's enough to also increase the conductivity and light the light. So the current is passing through those little elements, you know, to feed this bulb. So that's why when you put a 50-50 in, you're supposed to use purified or distilled water. So you're accelerating, again, the conductivity and the ability to, you know, corrode some of these components. So a little quick one for you. We got a little bit more, but we're gonna start draining this thing and pull it apart, really get into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cutting your hose, I'm cutting you. Dude, two piece fan shroud, easy access. I yeah, love man. it. Doesn't happen very often. Check this out. Uh oh. All right. Getting angry with stuff. Yeah. All right, oh. so you can see right away all the degradation in the hose and what this happening. As soon as I saw that these threads were wet, said, okay, it's probably wicking through this rubber, right, into this nylon, into this string right here. That's a real good indication that you have problems. And sure enough, man, if you could see that, all these fractures, all these cracks, even these, these lines here, what's happening is that coolant is wicking through here, soaking that nylon, and it's making this hose act like a big giant wire. It's crazy. Yeah. Now that inside is rubber, then you've got the, you know, the, the mesh in there to give it some strength. The outside is carbon black. Well, that's a very good conductor. And as Willie said, we went from the coolant being conductor to yeah. now the hose, which is even more. 
Now, if you think about it, you've got an engine sitting over here. It's on rubber mounts. It's separated from the chassis. It's got rubber hoses. Yeah. It's got a ground strap. So the current's flowing through that ground strap. Well, now you just added all these wires, hoses. So yeah. now instead of going all through the ground strap, right, all the stuff that's running through here can now run through hoses. And now it can run through your radiator. It yeah. can run through your, you know, your heater core. So all of that, by the way, encourages all that corrosiveness that you're going to see chew up radiators, chew up heater cores. Yeah, so you think, oh, I look at my coolant, it looks orangish. It's all right. I'll throw some tap water in there. It's all right. <laughs> Maybe some pond water, you know. <laughs> but there's chemistry happening in there, and that's why, you know, doing a proper drain and yeah. fill or getting a certified proper flush keeps all this stuff well alive for many, many miles. You know, it's just stuff you would never guess, but that's why we're here and that's why we're doing it. All right? Now, Back to it. Many times what causes your automatic transmission to leak is that the seals start to harden and no longer do their jobs. To solve this problem, add K&W TransX to your transmission fluid to repair the leak and revitalize hardened seals. The solvent and oils in TransX help seals stay flexible and prevent future leaks. How does it work? Just add TransX directly into the transmission dipstick tube, and you should notice results after the first use. K&W TransX also has powerful cleaning agents that remove sludge and varnish buildup to help prevent premature failure and extend transmission life. It lubricates gears, helps prevent slippage, and restores smooth shifting. This tip is brought to you by CRC Industries, the makers of Brake Clean, the number one brake parts cleaner. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Seatbelt Solutions, the safest seatbelt money can buy. All right, guys, welcome back, man. Just getting the final bolts off of our water pump. You know, this thing, had 300 plus thousand miles on it. Whew. Put through a lot of abuse. And really, when you're talking parts, especially if you want them to go 300,000 miles, you get what you pay for. That's why we always choose AC Delco. There's some cheap imitations out there, but with AC Delco, you know you're getting exactly what GM puts on their cars. They are GM when it comes to things like water pumps. Let me show you some things that they do that other guys don't. All right, so you know you got this bearing sitting in here, right? The weep hose right here in the middle. So when that bearing fails, you're gonna see some fluid weep out of that. But they have a ceramic seal, really impressive stuff where some of those other water pumps won't have that quality part in there. Behind that bearing is the impeller, okay? So you know when you choose like AC Delco parts that you're getting true GM components and things that are gonna meet all those OE standards and last another 300,000 miles. And while you're here and you have this front Fiat system off, it's a good thing to check, you know, things like tensioner pulleys and alternators. It sounds like somebody in this alternator is kind of kicking Tweety Bird's butt back here. You can hear a high pitch, little squeak, squaw. So that needs to be addressed. Some other bearings need to be addressed. But again, 300,000 miles on this girl. She's seen some days. So we'll get this water pump on here and then address some of the other stuff in the front of this motor. Continuing on with this tune-up, got the alternator on, that was pretty simple, a couple of bolts and clips on the back side. Now we're doing spark plugs and wires, it's an easy one, but there's a couple of tips in there. Now on the spark plug, when you put any C's on the threads, make sure not to get it anywhere else on the ceramic or on the electrodes. Now we got AC Delco plugs and you can see we had some serious miles on there, so old versus new. I think this thing's going to run a lot better. Now this is a double platinum, so it's gonna have great you know, erosion resistance. It's gonna last for a super long time. And um, it's a solid core of copper. So that's gonna pull the heat out really well. So about 70, 80% of the heat of the spark plug is actually traveling through that core and into the threads in the seat. Uh, so it's kind of a critical thing, although it seems like a simple little device. So we'll get these guys installed in there. And the last thing you wanna do is throw a little bit of dielectric grease. And what I like to do is just kind of roll a little bead on the ID. Smart. Yeah, and that's going to seal on the ceramic. And it's also going to seal, you know, on the connector end for the coil. And I'll dab that guy in. Make sure you change over the nice heat shield 
This stuff's all ready to go in there. Good tips, man. I can't believe those old spark plugs. Look at that. I wish my checking account had that many deposits. <laughs> hey, let me yeah, show you no something doubt. else, man. This is crazy because we got some cool tools. We're able to cut stuff apart. I cut out the old water pump. Now, this is the T-Stat yeah, housing. look at that. Now, check this out. It's a flat surface made it up here, but you can see the erosion, all right? It's actually chiseled away chunks of this aluminum housing. Like you would never think. You hear about the Grand Canyon being formed by the mighty Colorado River. Similar thing here in a T-Stat housing. Like, seriously, it's chunks of metal, pits gone from that pressure. Think about cool. it, man. The Grand Canyon took millions of years to form. This only took 316,000 miles. <laughs> think about it, if we put like a million on there, you know, like this could be pretty deep, <laughs> right? It's just amazing that that water pressure can eat that aluminum up. Yeah, like well, that. think about a water jet cutter. I mean, that's yeah. just cutting through steel. So you get a high impingement area like that and, you know, stuff wears out and that's that's why we're here, <laughs> Amen, you know, put man. the new ones on. Cool so. stuff. All right, I got one last plug to put in. I got one last wire and we can keep on grooving. Hey, let's talk something fun, like hub bearings. No, <laughs> seriously. Now, most cars out on the road today have ABS systems, and the hub bearing is a very integral part of that. And I'll explain, come on in here. This thing is known as a tone ring. Now, what happens in this hub bearing is a speed sensor sits right here, and every time one of these little humps past that magnetic field, it sends a pulse signal to the ABS module. And that's gonna be interpreted things like wheel speed and so forth. Now what happens with these, a lot of them are made out of pot metal, that nasty, junky, kind of clunky metal. For me, I live out in Colorado, a lot of guys go off-roading. They'll bend those, get sand, dirt, any sort of debris, or even past metal shavings from old brake jobs and so forth. And what happens is that will send a faulty signal to that ABS module. Now, Albeit sounding kind of cool, a wheel locking up at 65, 75 miles an hour is the worst case scenario. It's not something you really want to endure. So when you think hub bearings, think SRT hub bearings. Now there's all kinds of great benefits to these guys. Premium cast metal, you have watertight seals, long life grease, it's an OE design, so the fit and function, even the installation, super simple. Three bolts and you're in. And where it pertains, you have an ABS sensor, simple plug-in, you're good to go. All right, SRT wheel hubs, available at all your federated auto parts. Come more bolt. Get the skid plate out and down. What <laughs> the? All right. <laughs> so, so that's definitely a story. Yeah. We probably don't have time to find out why. And that, I'm not even gonna guess. But there you go. <laughs> Normally, there's maybe just a, a nut or a bolt that collects in there. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you uh, you keep working on that. I'm gonna keep working on the brakes here. These things are pretty tired. So we're gonna replace this whole four corners worth. And we've got some new technology coming down the pike that we're gonna show you too, which will be pretty cool. Whoo! Yeah, man, while he handles that, I'm double fisting some new stuff from CRC. It's the QC82. It's a professional degreaser. This stuff is tough, and obviously, with 300 plus thousand miles, I'm gonna need everything it has because the bottom of this carriage is just bathed in oil. And I mean a lot of it. You can see where it's dripping down here, running along the exhaust hitting the hanger and falling. But as you can tell, years and years of driving with drips, leaks, and so forth caused a lot of grime to build up underneath this. Now here's the deal with this stuff. It's water-based formula, okay? It's made with no caustics, which are anything that can kill living tissue, all right? So you basically just spray it on, and I mean coat everything, a good, huge bath, all right? And just get everything, a nice, thick layer of it, and then come back 10, 15 minutes later, and all you really gotta do is just hose it off. Now while that's soaking, I want to show you something else I found too. From AC Delco, they're sending these really cool brake lines. Now, the brake lines on this girl, actually not too bad, okay? We took a look at them, they're fairly clean. But if you live up north, then you know all about what I'm talking about. We actually now call them brake pipes, so get with that new terminology. Uh, these things are corroded, they've seen a lot of years of salt, mag chloride if you live out west and so forth. Well, these new lines, available from AC Delco, have a nylon coating, 
okay? They're protected on the inside, copper, then the finish on the outside. And this nylon coating, super strong, super resistant to any kind of, any kind of corrosion you're gonna get, whether it's salt or the mag chloride like I was talking about earlier. So basically, when your grandkids are trying to restore this truck 50 years down the road, the only thing they won't have to replace are these brake lines. Pretty sweet stuff, available from AC Delco. All right, I'm gonna get back here, hit it one or two more times. Any spots I missed, we'll hose this thing down, give them one clean ride underneath it. Right, check out these old toasted pads. Not a lot of left on there, maybe a little bit of butter. These are high durability type pads from AC Delco. They've got all the NVH features, noise, vibration, and harshness. So the chamfers, the slots, and the durability on how they bond the actual material onto the backing plate. You've got your little noise reducing shims on the back side, so all that's going to be great going forward. Our toasted rotor now gets replaced with a really cool painted on all the non machine surfaces, so it'll stay lasting a lot longer than the old stuff would. But if we look forward, we got a lot of neat stuff coming down the pipeline. So first of all is the pads. So there's a lot of heavy metals, copper, things like that, and the pads that California is starting to drive out of them. And AC Delco is jumping ahead of the game. You can see the little leaves here. And we've got a color coding to see where you are in the process of eliminating the copper and other heavy metals out of these pads so they're more environmentally friendly. So AC Delco is on top of that game. But what's really cool, coming down from the future, GM is launching. It's a ferritic nitrocarburization. Now that's a really cool process because what it does is it takes these rotors and it bakes them in a big oven full of nitrogen for about 24 hours at 560 C. And what that does is it diffuses the nitrogen into the material itself so it wears better, there's less noise, you're not gonna get the corrosion. So it's a lot like carburation that you think of you know, in other applications, but a special process to put it right into the rotors. So real neat stuff coming down from the OEs. We're gonna get in the aftermarket pretty soon. All right, I'm gonna start bolting this back on, get this truck rolling. All right, so Will has got the bottom side cleaned up with that CRC cleaner, but I'm about to make it oily by changing the oil. <laughs> but you know what? We can do it all over again. Oh, I think somebody put this on with an impact. There we go. Let's take a break. See you guys back in a minute. Metal Rescue and Dry Coat are the perfect complement of rust removal and rust prevention for all of your workshop tools, parts, and projects. Just let Workshop Hero do all the work for you. Take a look at this toolbox. It was half de-rusted months ago and then hit with an application of dry coat, giving it up to a year of indoor rust protection. On tools like this metal wrench, look at how soaking in Metal Rescue removed the rust. And on this rock hammer, rust is being removed without disturbing the rubber grip. Plus, these products are non-toxic, water-based, and even better, they're easy to use. K-Seal permanently repairs leaks in the entire coolant system, including head gaskets, block heater cores, radiators, water pump casings, and freeze plugs. When you make the repair, it's guaranteed for the life of the engine. It's a true pour and go. No draining, flushing, or pulling the thermostat. And it can be added to a hot or cold engine and can be poured into the overflow tank. Due to the K-Tech technology, it will not clog anything within the system. It's available at Federated Auto Parts. CRC's One Tank Power Renew is a complete fuel system cleanup for gasoline engines. It cleans indirect and direct fuel injector intake valves, carburetors, cylinder heads, the entire fuel system. CRC's One Tank is independently lab tested and dyno proven up to 97% total recovery and almost 6% miles per gallon gain proven after the first use. It's a concentrated detergent cleaner, which means you only need to use it three to four times a year. CRC's One Tank is also available for diesel engines. For more information about anything you've seen in today's show, check out MavTV.com or visit our website at TwoGuysGarage.com. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by ARP Bolts, the world leader in fastener technology. All right, this is the easy stuff, man. We're back to the 
just glide path, getting this Man. thing out the door. You know, little Dude. stuff like air filters. And you think about a vehicle that's had 300 plus thousand <laughs> miles on it, and we gave it enough life today, it could go 200. I mean, I hear all the time about some of these trucks putting a half million miles on, something you would never see in vehicles of old. Remember the times when you think, if I can get 100,000 miles out of her, it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice because the OEs are really delivering some quality hardware. And you know, yeah. with some TLC, Right, you can just make them go and go and go. So let me get this, uh, this filter in here. So that's gonna be nice. All uh, right, we we'll topped it off with some AC Delco oil. All right, got a new filter. And here's something you never really think about until it's too late, right? Wiper blades, how many times have we turned the wiper blades on, right? Streak, smear, snow. Oh, I should have changed them. We've got some AC Delco wiper blades as well. This coupling is going to make sure that you get precise load across the entire blade, all right? So you're not going to have that aerodynamic lift when you're going through, you know, that wind lift on the blade. So real good stuff. And again, something to think about before it's too late, before you're in that situation where you wish you had new wiper blades. Yeah, no doubt. Now, you saw we got all the coolant out of here. We're really trying to make sure that this coolant system is gonna last for a lot longer than it has in the past. So we've got our you know, distilled or purified water. So that's what we're gonna do our 50-50 mix with. Mm -hmm. you know, and we've got our new AC Delco. Now this is the Dex Cool. Now make sure whatever vehicle you have, right? there's different coolants, there's greens and oranges, and make sure you get the right coolant for your vehicle, and it'll make sure it's got the right lubricants in it, anti-corrosion, all that good stuff. So, we're gonna to top this thing off, burp it, you know, and <laughs> about the time we've got it erped yeah. up once or twice, it's ready to roll out that door. There you go, man. We're out of time today. Thanks so much. Hope you learned a lot. Some really cool stuff on an old girl, but she's ready to hit the road again, man. Thanks a ton. See you next time. See you guys.